Hi, everyone, and welcome to the PropCast. My name is Louisa Dickens, host of the PropCast and co-founder of Elamori, the global project recruitment and search consultancy. In this podcast, we'll explore how the digital evolution of the real estate industry is impacting the property market. The aim of each episode is to introduce you to a project innovator and discuss how their work has created a shift in focus when it comes down to digitizing the built environment. If you're interested in finding out more about PropTech or applying for a job in this space or keen to know who the big players are that are moving and shaking the real estate industry up, we have you covered and we will be bringing you an episode each week to connect to the VCs, PropTech startups and real estate professionals from around the globe. Also, a big shout out to our sponsors of the podcast, Roomtech and Pretech, who you will hear from during the episode. Welcome to the PropCast. Today's show will be on PropTech Down Under, and we'll be joined by Isaac Coonan and Julian Brockhurst, all the way from Australia. So welcome to the show, guys. Thank you very much for having me. It's a delight to be here. My name is Isaac, and I'm the founder of PropTech Brisbane. Yeah. Amazing to be here today, guys. Julian from PropTech Brisbane and Depreo as well. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. So for all our listeners, Isaac has an extensive background in the emerging technology sector with a focus on supporting the global emerging PropTech economy through creating bespoke opportunities for education, development and customer acquisition pathways. Isaac, as he just mentioned, is the founder of PropTech Brisbane and the Senior Industry Development Manager for Technology at the Brisbane Economic Development Agency. Now, both of these roles see Isaac's time being utilised to develop high-impact initiatives connecting the built environment industry with the emerging technology cluster in the capital city of Queensland, Brisbane. Julian, who is also joining us, is currently the APAC Business Development Lead for Pro, which is a UK-founded cloud-based tool transforming the way real estate industry creates and manages development feasibility reports. Julian has over 10 years experience expanding businesses and building networks across international markets such as UK, US and Australia. Naturally inquisitive and a lifelong learner, his goal to combine domain experience and expertise within the property sector and to drive innovation. And Julian is also a director of PropTech Brisbane and spends his time guiding some of the most promising PropTech scale-up companies across APAC, which I'm sure we'll hear a little bit more about later. But without further ado, welcome to the show again, guys. And let's start with the question. So Isaac, why don't you tell us a bit more about how you got into PropTech, a little bit more about your role, and I'm super interested in the part to education as well. But yeah, tell us your story. No, absolutely. For me, my entrance into the big wide world of prop tech didn't actually come from the property sector. It actually came from the technology sector. I have had uh, a lot of experience working for a number of Australian incubators, co-working space accelerator programs, all really focused on supporting technology agnostic companies. So anything from creative tech to agricultural tech to fintech to prop tech. However, it was within my role at Queensland University of Technology that I really started to dig my teeth into the prop tech sector. And I saw the potential of what the emerging technology cluster for property was really doing. My my experience in the property sector really demonstrated that there was nothing but room for improvement when it came to the digital adoption or technology adoption within the traditional industry. The emerging technology cluster were creating phenomenal tools, but they had no real way to actually articulate their value to the property sector. Where I saw a massive gap in the market was to really understand enough about the property industry, the property sector, their needs, their desires, their pain points to be able to articulate that to the technology cluster. And then also understand enough about the emerging technology products and innovations that were being created to translate that to the property economy. So I sit in this wonderfully weird place about knowing enough about both sides of the coin to ensure that they're able to communicate with each other in a way that actually drives adoption, that drives Mm. outcomes. And my experience in the educational side has really been centered purely around that. I've never been in the business of helping technology companies to create better technology solutions, nor have I ever worked in the property sector for them to create best practices or baseline principles. It's really been around educating both sides of this prop tech coin to ensure that they're able to communicate, collaborate and work with each other in an efficient way. So I, yeah, as you said, I am the founder of PropTech Brisbane, which is a community group centered around bringing visibility and transparency along with amplification to the greater Brisbane PropTech region 
along with supporting the property sector we have here. And my role with Inside Brisbane Economic Development Agency has me acting on behalf of the Lord Mayor of Brisbane City Council, really driving the focus of property technology as a leading industry vertical for the city of Brisbane. So yeah, that's in a roundabout, long-winded way how I got into PropTech. Awesome. Yeah, it's interesting what you're saying about basically communicating, educating, having that balance between on the technology side and the real estate side. There's limited amount of industry folks who have that at the moment. And that this whole podcast is about bridging that gap. And that's in our intro. So I'm sure we have a hell of a lot to learn from you. Julia, tell us about you because we've got lots in common. You were previously a REACH mentor. You obviously now are the APAC business event lead for Dan's business at Preo. Obviously love Dan, love what he's doing. Tell us how you got in. Yeah, sure. I started at at, uh, a QUT where Isaac was involved in that education side as a student studying property economics and swiftly went overseas to to the UK and completely left that whole degree behind and moved into a startup, but in the e-travel world and creating experiences and and events across across Europe and and looking to exit to one of the big online uh, e-travel brands such as Mm Hotels.com. So that was a really good introduction, especially at a fresh out of university introduction to startup world, but also... So in, in probably what was a more mature market than what prop tech is, or especially was when I jumped in. So you kind of saw how it was evolving after a few years. And then I got the opportunity to go to, to New York and join a, a flexible workspace provider. And this was during the heyday of WeWork, when WeWork was still really big and powerful and, and pre-IPO and and all the rest of it that's fallen out. It was an exciting time to try and help landlords and educate them around the advantages of flexible office space, the, the advantages of shorter term leases, this more this workforce that today doesn't wants to work from home, from the office for a while, downtown, uptown, midtown, whatever it may be, and really help them try and strengthen their portfolios and make them a lot more sticky with some of the uh, some of the uh, tenants that were roaming around New York City at the time. And I remember that really put me in touch with a lot of obviously property people within New York and being such a hub of prop tech. I was pretty naive or green to the uh, the prop tech world at that point. But over those two years that I did spend in New York, that was when I really sunk my teeth into it. And I can still remember sitting in Midtown one night after I got a, an invite from a colleague of mine to go to a Metaprop pitch event. That first night, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And I just remember sitting there amazed at the pitches from various different companies solving various different problems. And some of them went completely over my head and, and others I was like, I can absolutely see how that would work and why isn't that a huge company right now? Why why is there only two people standing in front of me with a laptop? And so that really piqued the interest. And, and so when moving back to Australia, that was exactly sort of the, the space I wanted to put myself in. That kind of intersection of property technology and then also that sort of more of sustainability or ESG point mm. um, and how we can really, and, and everyone has to pick their battle, I think, in this sort of the sustainability and that sort of climate change movement whether it's fighting trash or plastic, reducing emissions. But I think if we can use space and buildings, which we live, work and play in a more efficient manner, build them in a more efficient manner, then that's going to go a long way to solving those issues. So that was really why I focused on prop tech as a sort of an industry and an ecosystem and yeah, how I got involved. Yeah. And you have obviously recently joined Preo Dan's team. How, how did that sort of come out? Isaac, I think you mentioned it might have been through an introduction through Project Brisbane. But what's your sort of role at Preo? Yeah, so at Preo, for those that don't know, very quickly, is it's a cloud-based financial feasibility and, and modelling tool for feasibility for property developments. And it's really going to take that to a whole other level. With, uh, it's cloud-based digital. And then we'll start having a lot more plugins with other players within the ecosystem to have a more of a data-enriched logic-based decisions around the feasibilities. And so Dan and the team have been doing really well in the UK and we're looking to come into APAC. And yeah, so I think got in touch with that with Isaac and was looking for someone down here. And at the time I found myself looking for a new project and it was just you know, right place, right time. Um, yeah. And so today the mandate is really to expand that and it's going really well. The property market has just rebounded so quickly from covid which saw you know, a dip and you know, government stimulus and, and a lot of hype around the property sector has meant there's been a lot more developments in the pipeline, which is where Preo is really helping out. Yeah. And for those listening, Julie and Isaac are fortunate enough to be sitting next to each other in an office. Lots of listeners, you guys are based across the US, UK, and all of us are still in a little bit of a lockdown. So all very envious. Now, 
Isaac, you mentioned Procter at Brisbane a little bit. Lots of these associations are popping up across the world and each sort of country, obviously. I'm involved in the UKPA, the Procter Collective, there's many. Tell us a bit more. What's your associations at USP? What does it provide to community? Who's part of it? And what's, I guess, the future sort of plans? Yeah, no, absolutely. Great question. I think for us, what we really, like at the very core of what we're wanting to do with Procter Brisbane, PropTech Brisbane is bring <laughs> visibility, transparency, and amplification to the emerging PropTech sector here in Brisbane, whilst also connecting industry to the incredible PropTech network that exists within our local area. So I do feel like I understand like PropTech Connective, the PropTech Association of Australia, PropTech Berlin, there is incredible networks and associations that exist to really service a broad region slash country. However, we are really taking a city focus. We're really wanting to kind of champion cities' involvement in the nurture and development of an emerging technology cluster, particularly when nearly every single city around the world, the largest contributor to their GDP is the property sector. The largest employer is the property or real estate sector. So it's in the interest of cities and local government areas to really double down and support this sector and the work being done by PropTech. So what we are centered to do is just bring, as I said, transparency, visibility, and amplification. We have got PropTechs, anyone from the really early stage companies looking to get that initial validation or that initial customer all the way up to companies that are generating 5 million plus annual revenue Mm. who are just wanting to give back. So we've got that incredible sort of mix of companies that are all wanting to really put their arms around each other and really create a community. On the flip side, we've got industry. And that's everything from the leading associations like Residential uh, Real Estate Institute of Queensland, REIQ, the Property Council of Australia, the Urban Development Institute of Queensland, all the way down to some of our top projects. One of the initiatives that Julian actually ran earlier for us in this year was an initiative where we, we sourced some of the top prop techs that had an interest in one of, our, in one of the city's highest ranking development projects, which is Cross River Rail, which is, for anyone who's not aware is actually a, what, five billion? Five billion dollar Five project. billion dollar development project creating our underground rail network here in the city. So we've built a relationship with Cross River Rail. We asked them, hey, what are you guys needing from the way of emerging technologies to help manage your precincts, to help manage the development of your precincts in the planning process? And then what we did is we actually created an avenue and created an opportunity where our prop tech network were able to network with, engage with, and shake hands with decision Mm. makers that cross river rail. So for us, our sweet spot is less around the advocation and I suppose uh, champion of legislation at a government level, which is where a lot of associations sits. Our, Our sweet spot is great. What huge projects or what industry groups do we have here in Brisbane that we can physically and tangibly bring in the PropTech network and create avenues for technology adoption? So that's where we sit. That's where we play. We have a beautiful relationship with Kylie Davis, who started the PropTech Association of Australia. Um, We're absolutely not competitive with that because, as I said, we really have a city focus on our initiative. Here is a message from our sponsor, Michael Beckerman from Cretech. Hey, this is Michael Beckerman of Cretech. I'm thrilled to share with you Cretech New York and Cretech London, the largest real estate tech networking events in the world, will be back live in person this October. Join us this fall in both London and New York for in person networking, demos, and keynote presentations to drive new business like never before. Make sure you use the code LMRE2021 to receive $40 off your ticket today. To redeem this offer, visit cretech.com slash events. Hope to see you in New York and London this fall. I think those listening, if you haven't, uh, if you're spying to APAT, definitely speak to Kylie. She is queen of PropTech, a thought leader, and just 
all-time power woman absolutely lovely now let's talk about the prop deck scene how it's developed maybe we can start off talking about the prop decks and julian you sort of mentioned obviously the esg side obviously i know in australia as well there's a massive growth of contact as well you obviously have you know lenley's which is headquartered in australia tell us a little bit more from your opinion Who's leading the way in terms of prop tech startups, other than a Preo, obviously? <laughs> obviously, obviously. Broadly, I think Australia, the prop tech scene, as it has globally, has really taken off. And, and I think the momentum was definitely there pre COVID. It was obviously get, getting a lot more of the investment dollars going its way, uh, a lot more media attention. The, the big corporates were starting to pay attention, giving the startups that, those pilots and Roles opening up within companies, head of prop tech, chief innovation officer, technology officer, all of these kind of roles. So that momentum was there. And in a lot of ways, it was, especially in Australia, it was accelerated throughout COVID as we really had to figure out how to operate in a much more flexible and digital world as we are today over, over Zoom. And so I think that has really driven prop tech over the past 18 months, two years. And then we've seen like the emergence of dedicated prop tech accelerators. You've got the guys at Taronga and the Real Tech X program. You had Reach, which mm. Isaac and I were directors of it, that were also here. Uh, and then as city initiatives that Isaac runs as well. And then the association. So as, as we just mentioned, the Prop Tech Association Australia and, and Prop Tech Brisbane. So like all of these things are really coming together and really bubbling at the moment. And so I think that it's just like a really good environment for prop tech across Australia. And then I think the government support, again, like throughout COVID, really focused on the property sector at large. That was our way to sort of over overcome the, the potential recession uh, and all that sort of stuff that was a result of COVID. So property is in a really good position right now. And some of the ones that are really taking the lead, in my mind, the, the three at the top of my head are, are sort of an archistar um, yep. for, for me. And, and that, that ranges for, I mean, some uh, like archistar, you know, just raised another big round really leading the way in a, in a lot of areas, especially from the development side. Box Brownie, I think that's sort of close to, to Isaac and I's heart. We came through the REACH program once upon a time, also based in Southeast Queensland. So we could definitely put them in the, uh, the PropTech Brisbane bucket. And Equium that's doing really, really well. And just, I think, made a, quite a sizable acquisition to, to gain some market share across the UK. So for me, they're, they're sort of the three prop techs themselves. Um, yeah. But it's really hard to you know single anyone out. There's so many doing really well. And I think it's, if you ask us this question in 12 months time, there'll be a lot more on that are doing some big, big numbers. Yeah. And probably some pretty big US and European ones who are coming over. I'm actually working with at the moment, but that's top secret. Isaac, what about you? Can let, why don't we talk about the sort of the agencies and the consultancy side? Are there any sort of, I know Len Lease has been making some uh, serious sort of moves. Uh, they're developing stuff in house. Is there, is, Joan Zhang, Knight Frank, PwC, Deloitte, are they getting involved in the prop tech? What are you saying? Yes, they are. But I'm going to take this moment to say something potentially controversial, but also reflecting on technology clusters and industries that have scaled before the prop tech sector. You look at the fintech world, every consultancy firm, every major bank, every, everyone was trying to jump on it, but it was from more of a marketing campaign. It was from more of a, hey, we just want to be seen to be doing cool stuff. But the thought of actually investing in adopting and working with emerging technologies, it's too difficult. We just want to be seen doing it. And one thing I've definitely noticed, particularly here in Australia, is there's a lot of people who want to be seen. The, the hard part is how do you navigate your way from understanding who wants to be seen versus who has a genuine interest in supporting this sector? You mentioned a couple phenomenal groups. The top of my mind, Charter Hall. The work mm. that uh, Sheridan is doing as uh, Chief Technology and Chief Information Officer uh, for that organization is incredible. And she has a, it's not a, it's not a marketing ploy. It's not just something fun that she can stink on LinkedIn. She wants to bring these innovations and these technologies into uh, a company like Charter Hall to make sure they've got a runway, to make sure that they are going to be able to create tangible ways to delight and excite the tenants yeah. within their, their company. So I think if I was to say who's doing what in the consultancy world, the big four consultants, they're always involved. They're always a part of it. They're always doing something and I love them for it. I think if you're looking at the big commercial groups, absolutely. Charter Hall is one to watch. They're, they're not pissing around. They are <laughs> putting money where their mouth is and yeah. they are doubling down, which is a beautiful thing to see. If you look at the residential space, look, 
take this with a hefty grain of salt because I'm based in Brisbane, which is the cap city of land. But the work that Antonia and Rod are doing, the CEO and CFO of REIQ is phenomenal. They are not just supporting property technologies. They're literally bringing prop techs like Hutley, like Nextform, like so many other companies into their organization to really demonstrate the potential to their members, to really demonstrate the potential to industry. They're not taking a simple, okay, we'll just, we'll give you a two minute speaking spot on stage. They're really trying to dig deeper. They say, what does your product do? Explain to us how that makes sense to industry. And then we will explain to industry why they should be connecting with you. So you've got these industry champions that are really, really taking prop tech leaps and bounds for uh, forward in their journey which in my mind that's what it's all about yeah 100 percent. and you and julian you're based in brisbane you mentioned obviously the the another hub is, is sydney are these say if a business is looking to launch in australia is that are those to go to there's talk of melbourne where the sort of where the hub look now you're asking this question to two people who are sharing a drink <laughs> in an office in brisbane who are so it's very difficult for us to have an open mind, but I'm going, I'm going to do my absolute best. Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, and Adelaide do incredible work to support the prop tech sector. It would be a lie for me to say that there was one city that was really championing the sector more than another. Mm. What I will say about Brisbane is you take into account the livability, the feasibility, and the actual construct of the city it's second to none, in my opinion, but also in a lot of research. But then you also look at where the headquarter offices are. You've got headquarters for Harcourts, for Remax, for Ray White, for LJ Hooker, for Little Real Estate. They're all here in Brisbane. Then you also flip the switch and think commercial. You've got the technology team for CBRE based here in Brisbane. You've got a massive amount of JLL's resource based here in Brisbane. So Brisbane actually has, I suppose, the industry decision makers right here in our city yeah. you mentioned you've got brisbane city council saying no this is an important sector we're going to double down in terms of financially supporting this ecosystem but also supporting the ecosystem in non-financial way i'm not being biased i've worked in prop tech here in australia all around the world i actually haven't ever seen a city saying we want to claim this is ours mm-hmm. sydney can have fintech because let's be fair that's where she's at <laughs> We want to claim Brisbane as the epicenter for prop tech. And I'm unapologetic in saying that, that yep. if you are a prop tech looking for Australia, have a chat to Julian and I. Like, we'll go wherever you need, but there's a really compelling case here in Brisbane. I think also when, and I've seen this across the US and I guess startups looking to the scale, lots of people think, okay, I have to go to SF or I have to go to New York. And now everyone's looking like Denver, Colorado, people now actually having some of their salespeople based in Canada because there's an incredible um, educated, hungry talent pool. And it's not at the crazy salaries of New York and SF. And I can imagine, I know from market research, salaries in Sydney are higher. And if you, with all this sort of remote working, and you guys are back in the office, but I think we are all coming back to this hybrid model, you probably don't have to have someone based in these cities. My team are going to be based all over and probably some random suburbs across the world. Um, So it'll be interesting to see what happens to that in terms of startup scaling when they're looking to launch. Hi, this is Nelson from Property Quants. I'd like to invite you to join our Introduction to Data Science and Machine Learning for Real Estate seminar. To learn more, visit propertyquants.com slash seminar. And use special code LMRE20 on Eventbrite for a discount. Can we go into a little bit more about the ESG space? You mentioned obviously the council's looking to invest in technology, support it. What sort of what have you seen in terms of growth there? And Julian, maybe do you want to go into this one a little bit more? Yeah, sure. I think ESG is just you want to still call it a trend, but it's definitely not new. It's been there for a while. Like obviously, the UN's put the, those 17 goals in place for a long time now. And, and I think everyone's really waking up to and joining the cause and getting behind it. And it's no longer just because it's a fad, it's marketing ploy. It's, got, it's starting to produce good returns. It's a good investment decision to get involved in this uh, and really champion the sort of the ESG goals. So I think that, uh, again, 
there's a lot of companies that are going to be really focusing on that. I think a lot of it at the moment is around the construction side or mm. up until the, on, on the property perspective, but then just efficiently running, running just the big buildings, the commercial side of things. Like I think if you look at commercial, there's a case to be made at the moment that ESG, it can really obviously reduce the cost of operation, but then in some cases it increase the revenue, which is giving you better margins. And I think for the corporate guys and office landlords at the moment, it seems like there's just a real need to justify the value of the assets with vacancy sort of slowly grinding upwards. They need to figure out how to drive more revenue per square meter to again, justify the, the price they may have paid for a building at the end of 2019 or think outside the box and bring some more innovation into that space. And I think again, the, the ESGs are really going to help out there. And yeah, again, I, and I think notably the, one of the, the accelerators here in Australia from Taronga, I mean, their whole cohort, I think in, in its entirety is purely focused on ESG on, and, and the construction side. So if you're seeing those, the, the, those big moves being made, mm. um, it's really encouraging. And I know that that's a global trend. I know that's happening right across APAC and North America and Europe. So it's, yeah, it's encouraging to see. Yeah, no, definitely. Isaac, is there anything you want to build on? No, look, I think Julian definitely covered it. And I actually like what he said at the beginning. ESG, I think we need to move out of the realm of this becoming a trend because it's not a trend. It actually is something that is so, it, it, it does need to be so fundamental mm. to call this. And what I actually love about the emerging prop tech sector is more often than not, prop techs tie in to the ESG goals, even when they don't realize it. Because at the end of the day, digital and technology solutions solve for a lot of the key pain points created in the way that we work, the way that we transact and engage with real estate. It's actually funny to see so many emerging prop techs not realizing that they're actually contributing to the ESG goals and educating on that journey. But no, I think Julian articulated it in a beautiful way. I love how you support each other, the bromance. We can, I can feel it. <laughs> oh, it's real. Okay, now let's talk about startups launching in Australia. Obviously, if they launch, they're now got to consider Brisbane and I can completely see why it's definitely a hub and reasons to launch there. Are there any tips for people looking to launch in Australia? Is it, it's very much about a matter of obviously speaking to all the key players out there. Any success stories you can maybe mention or do's and don'ts? I don't know if each one of you wants to go have a crack at this one first. Yeah, look, I would be uh, delighted to have a crack at this one first. Obviously, Julian is a, a prime example of how it can work well with a prayer launching into this region, We're connecting with people on the ground to understand the market, but then also find the right people to really champion your product here. We're, we're doing a lot at the moment on behalf of the city to really attract international companies to Australia in the prop tech sector. One of the companies in my uh, most recent programs, the Brisbane EDA prop tech pilot program, Renty. They're based in New Zealand and they're expanding their products. They're going guns blazing in New Zealand, but they're expanding their product to Australia. This is genuine feedback, but part of the few things that they found really helpful is just being able to have conversations with people on the ground mm -hmm. and just being able to have conversations with uh, trusted people who are in the industry. And I think what's really daunting to prop tech founders and to prop techs who are looking to scale internationally is if you haven't spent time there, if you don't know the market, if you don't know the players, how are you going to make uh, the right hire? How are you going to make the right business decision? How are you going to create the right partnerships? So if I was a prop tech not based in Australia, looking to scale, I would say, as, as you rightfully said, ping Kylie Davis from the Prop Tech Association of Australia. Julian and I love a phone call. Speak to a few trusted people here. We're not going to uh, take you for every dollar. We're not going to... Um, use as a consulting C firm, but we've got a genuine interest in supporting the development of the prop tech economy here in Australia. Mm. We're, we're not doing you a favor. If anything, um, you're doing us a favor. We want you here. We want you to come. So if you are genuinely interested, the first point of call, in my opinion, is always do your research and figure out who the trusted people are. Second to that, my second point would be hire the right first person. I think Renty has done a phenomenal job with hiring Leanne Sorby as the business development manager for Australia. She has just done a phenomenal job building her network, building Renty's network. 
obviously slightly biased because Julian's here, but Apreu also did a pretty good job <laughs> of carrying Julian. Like he was able to rapidly build the brand and rapidly build the networks for a, a company based in the UK here in Australia. So when it comes to hiring your first person, my two cents worth would be don't go at it alone. Speak to the people who have avenues or have a network that they can recommend the right people because Australia more than anywhere around the world is relationship based. If you get a bad apple as your first hire, I'm really sorry, but you are not going to be able to succeed here in Australia. It's, I think this is in a lot of countries, the prop tech community as it's gross, it's still fairly small, it's tight, so everyone knows everyone. So I completely echo um, everything Isaac said. And Ella Marie is literally about to, we've been in the soft launch mode. I guess we're not a proper tech company, but we've been in, been basically growing across APAC and we will be fully launched in the next week. So if you are looking for your first boot on the ground, speak to obviously Julian, Isaac, Kylie and the other four leads in Australia. Um, definitely give um, Ella Marie an uh, email or call. I was doing some research the other day. Can you believe it? That some of the biggest companies in the world didn't exist 30 years ago. The likes of Facebook and Uber. On the other hand, real estate is a total juxtaposition, being the oldest asset class in the world. We often hear about the property industry being a slow mover and the need for prop tech is clear to improve solutions and take advantage of the data being gathered. We saw 21 billion in investment into prop tech in 2020, and it was predicted a further increase of 25% in 2021, which has already been surpassed, which means there'll be plenty to talk about when it comes to the innovation of the built environment. EY reported that 53% of real estate owners think that they don't have the in-house talent to adopt technology successfully. But technology-minded talent and leadership, the implementation and widespread adoption of your product might be proving tricky. If that is the case, we are here to help. So head to our website, lmre.tech, and we can find the right talent for your company's needs. Now, Julie and Isaac, we're coming to the end of the podcast, but don't worry, we still got the LMRE part. So L is lessons learned. It's mentioned anyone or shout out to a certain product. Um, Julian, you don't shout out to a preo, ideally. Oh, any regrets in your career, but positive spin on it. And E, what are you most excited about in the future of prop tech? So let's stop the L part. Julian, what's the biggest lesson you've learned? Oh, I think you learn a lesson every day and in, in every interaction, or every company you've ever worked for. But I guess the theme and as cliche as it might sound, is, is just nothing in the moment remains the same. And the lesson is that if you're really married to the old school way, the legacy way of doing things, especially in the property sector, which has been a bit of a laggard in its adoption, but I think it, it's quickly changing. And if, and if you're not changing along with it, changing is just remaining, like keeping up with the norm. A lot of people think if they change one thing, that's going to set them up for the next 10 years. And then that's all they have to do. But it's this consistent change in innovation. And again, mentioning a few of the, the big roles that are going within the big corporates, such as Sheridan, that, that role is really being championed at the moment. And it's an understanding of innovation is key to our core products. We need to continuously do it. And so it's just been a lesson, in, I guess, yeah, in my career so far is just, just to keep trying new things. You won't yeah. always win. It's not always going to work out. And it shouldn't be the expectation that it does. And that's just the whole point of it. Yeah, no, agreed. Isaac, what about you? What lessons have you learned? Look, the number one lesson that I've learned, and I probably learned it my first year uh, working in the industry, and then I learned it every day since, is this is a relationship game, but not just real estate, not just prop tech, but the business economy is built on relationships. And I think now more than ever with the, the continual adoption of technology and the continual advancements of technology being the sharpest kid on the block is still cool but it's 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 no longer the be all and end all it's your ability to build and manage meaningful relationships that is really going to set uh you and your business apart and i think that not enough people in the prop tech sector particularly in the prop tech support mm. sector understand that you're not going to make a quick buck out of this industry. This isn't something you can charge every cent of your time for. This is a relationship play. This is a long-term play. And if you're in it for a quick win, maybe it's time to move on. Yeah, agreed. Look at long-term plans. Um, now, we've mentioned quite a few products already. You know, we've mentioned Arkansas, we've mentioned Equium, Preo, Learnly, Taronga, Renty. Um, but what, I guess, for your you personally, 
and Julian, you can go first. Is there anyone or product or service you'd like to give a shout out to? Not, not one. And obviously not allowed to mention a prayer, but there it is. Uh, but <laughs> it, it's, it's definitely, I think at the moment, and we've found this through PopTech Brisbane, is it's, is it's those industry leaders that are at the top of the tree to have really no incentive or no, or, or don't have to sort of go outside their office and, and start trialing stuff, put their neck on the line engage, mentor, uh, invest in potentially personally in these startups, but do anyway. It's so, it's such a big help and it's so encouraging to see, especially here in Brisbane, but I think all up and all, all over Australia, that there are, there's a growing number of these senior executives and, and property professionals that are willing to spend their own personal time. And in some cases, personal capital mm. on these startups when they really don't have any need to. And I give yeah, I give a shout out to those guys that are you know really the trailblazers at the moment, and, and so, soon that trend will become just a fundamental. But it's those guys taking the first step and and looking like a little bit of the odd ball or spending those extra few hours every other week engaging and mentoring. Like mm. they they deserve big props. Awesome, thank you for that, Julian and Isaac. Is there any one product service you'd like to give a shout out to? Yes, absolutely. And I'm going to be uh, far less polite than Julian. No, I think you know. Yes, everyone doing their bit for the community deserves the praise, but there is a couple companies at the moment we're working with that people should be Googling. And in my mind, um, one of the top ones is Hutley, which is a very successful prop tech here in Greater Brisbane, has recently closed an $8 million round and is servicing the property management side of the residential real estate industry. Nice. They are led by a gentleman named Jeremy Hastings. You do not want to miss this gentleman or the company that has been built. It is phenomenal. Looking a little bit earlier than that, there's an awesome startup that is really servicing the commercial real estate and retail space at the moment from the way of data analytics and thermo mapping. The company's name is Space Platforms. It is head up by a gentleman named Cena. And it is completely revolutionizing the way that people engage with and are able to be mapped in the built environment. And they are probably my two absolute top picks for products at the moment. I love that. Everyone listening, check them out. Now we've come on to the R, the regrets in career. That could be, I don't know, not lots of people say it's not uh, taking enough risk, going out and starting up their own business. Maybe yours could be not um, starting at Proctor Brisbane sooner. I don't know. But Julian, go for it. Huh. It's just get, getting in earlier, right? I think that the, Isaac and I are both so engaged in the space now and to be more effective at what we're doing at this point in time really only is going to come from a longer tenure within this space. So the regret would be not starting sooner. I think that would be the, the bigger one there. But other than that, like there's no major regrets. Everything's led to this point and again very happy where i am at the moment so there's no major regrets at this point in time at this point in time hopefully not in the future either um isaac what about you i think my single biggest regret and it's happened a couple times is i get sold on the dream and i get sold on the inspiration and i lose sight of the tangible Mm. and i think that is something that i've uh struggled with like i'm obviously an enthusiast i love I love the excitement for PropTech, um, but unfortunately of my career, I think I've been sold a couple times too heavily on the dream without doing the appropriate level of legwork to really understand, well, is this organization actually was it, what it says it is and what it claims to be? So biggest regret, and hopefully anyone else who's listening can learn from is get excited. I love being excited, but don't lose track of what is tangible and don't lose track of what is possible. I like that. I like that a lot. I might nick that one from you. And the last part of the podcast is what you're most excited about for in terms of the future of PropTech. Julian, why don't you um, finish us off? What, what are you most excited about? I think I'm most excited about more of a few more platform plays coming together, a bit more consolidation. One of the big trends in the property space in Australia at the moment is the the build to rent i think it's known as prs over, mm. over in pay or multifamily in the states and it's really an emerging sector here in australia and i think that that's just going to bring so much more innovation whether it's the internationals coming to australia onshoring and of course they're going to start in brisbane or it's the local sort of prop tech community really rising to the challenge 
that Bill Tran or, or multifamily presents. I know that there's a lot of huge international property giants that are investing here with alongside local partners. Uh, and they're all really hungry to solve a lot of the issues around that. So that's like a, a very specific area that I'm, that mm. I'm quite excited to see how it evolves. Awesome. Thank you for that. And Isaac, last but not least, what are you most excited about? I'm sure there's quite a few things, but if you can maybe narrow it down to one or two. <laughs> yeah, look, I think I'm going to narrow it down to one. What I'm most excited about is for prop tech no longer to be a buzzword, for prop tech no longer to be the new thing. Prop tech is not a new industry. It is a subset of the property industry. It is the digital solutions and R&D of a phenomenal sector that has created hundreds and thousands of jobs globally around the world and has created incredible opportunities. And prop tech is just the next evolution of the property industry. So I'm really excited when we reach that point um, where prop tech doesn't need its own stage. It's just a, it's just a subset of the property industry and it's accepted and embraced that way. Yeah. Agreed with that. I think there's how much is their last year in investments? Something like 22 billion, something crazy. And it's only going to double up. Right. Unfortunately, Julian Isaac, it's probably quite late for you guys and you want to go crack a cold one. So we've come to the end of the show. Can you let the audience know what's the best way to connect with obviously both of you, hear about your businesses and also, of course, connect with ProTech Brisbane. Julian, why don't you go first? Yeah, I think the easiest way to connect with this is, is LinkedIn. We're all over it. You can obviously connect with myself there, send me a message, uh, an email, and, and also from ProTech Brisbane as well. Just that's where you're going to find us. Uh, and where you're going to stay across what we're up to and, and some of the initiatives that we're running. So that's the, the best and easiest place, I'd say. Awesome. And Isaac, what about you? Echoing Julian, LinkedIn is the place. Hit us up there. Both of us are very active on it. And so is PropTech Brisbane. If you're interested to know more, that is that is the avenue to get us on. Awesome. Look, thank you guys both for joining us on the PropCast. I'm looking forward to catching up with you after the show. Likewise. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us this week on the PropCast and a big thanks to our guests and our sponsors, Cretech and Reentech. Make sure you visit our website, lmre.tech, where you can subscribe to our newsletter, keep up with our industry news and events, or if you're looking for your next career move, it's all on there. The PropCast can be found on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube, where all good content is found. Whilst we're at it, if you found value in the show, we'd appreciate it if you could spread the word and tell a friend about it or even write us a review. And I'll catch you next week.